Well, my name is Dave Bruton. I'm the Utilization and Marketing Forester for the Kansas Forest Service. And Dave Prescott um, has a walnut hauler. It's first year he's, he's had that established. I talked to him a few years ago about uh, um, getting a hauler and possibly adding that to kind of his offerings here. He has a sawmill and a kiln and does woodworking projects. And so the fall is a great time for people to come out and kind of visit and see those sorts of things. But um, the Kansas Forest Service, we try to promote you know, the forest products that we have here in the state. And uh, walnuts are one in particular that oftentimes I get calls into the office this time of the year where people have twisted their ankle or hit, hit the nuts with their lawnmower and broke a window or something like that. Most people will put up with walnut trees in their yard or landscape for a few years, but eventually something like that's going to happen. They're gonna twist their ankle, they're going to you know run over with a car or something. And, and so they, they're looking for opportunities to, to do something with that material. And uh, people like David having this hauler uh, provide that opportunity. We have six hauling stations this year across the state of Kansas. Uh, David's ha happens to be the furthest west uh, hauling station in the United States. Uh, Hammond's Products Company provides the hauler hauling machine and then David operates that. But it's kind of interesting that he's the furthest one in the United States. And so I'd like to have these haulers spread out you know across the landscape here in Kansas in the fall time in a reasonable distance where people don't have to drive very far but uh, David's finding that people are coming in from Wichita and Kansas City Manhattan uh, so driving in for a considerable distance and just the fall time is a great time for people to be out and enjoy the weather and some people just enjoy picking up the nuts even if they're not making money they're at least paying for some of their gas maybe to, to get here so uh, again we as the Kansas Forest Service really like to promote the utilization of our resources here in the state and uh, great opportunity for, for you know scouting groups or 4-H groups or community organizations to, to gather up walnuts that are falling in their community and try to utilize those. So glad to have David having the machine here this year and, and uh, he's, he, he can tell you more about how many pounds and all that sort of stuff he's accumulated, but uh, it does add to the economy um, and a way to utilize the resource as well. Yeah, I want to thank Dave for getting me started in this uh, project. Uh, he got it with me a couple of years ago, and uh, my grandson, just like everybody else, we started figuring out that these walnuts laying around have a little bit of a cash value. Plus, also get them cleaned up in the yards. But uh, yeah, so uh, I contacted Hammond's uh, Walnuts out of Missouri and and uh, did a little contract with them. They set up the machine, and uh, and we've been advertising a little bit, getting going. New this first year it might be a little short. Next year, I got a feeling it'll probably double. <clears throat> but what it does is does give a cash inflow into the local area and the people that do it something that's there it's great for you to get started on this little pile of walnuts right here constitutes just right around six thousand dollars there's twenty two thousand five hundred pounds of walnuts sitting here right now so just by doing that for the last three weeks and we've got two more weeks to go november 14th will be the last day we accept nuts uh, but anybody that wishes to contact me, my phone number is 785-219-9475. Contact, and I'll fill you in on any other information or where you're at. Maybe you need to be closer to Lawrence. There's people over there that deliver nuts, uh, uh, too, and uh, can help you out get that project done. Um, well, it started out right after World War II. I think the, the original owner uh, or owners they came back from the war and all these walnuts were laying around and so they thought they should come up, come up with some use and um, actually they they get a, quite a little bit of money out of the shells you know side of it they actually make so when more they, money out of the shell than they do the meat when they crack it they'll pull the meats out mm -hmm. but then they've got the shells and so it's in makeup removers uh, if you look the grit part of it um, and several years ago when they were redoing the statue of liberty i can't remember if that was around you know 2000 whether that was kind of a big deal then or what but anyhow they used the holes to sandblast mm -hmm. the statue of liberty because they didn't want to have a bunch of sand or so now it's you know, kind of material. practice now using this as a, as a blasting head and people use them we've got one guy that um well keith lynch that does a lot of reloading of shells yeah, and so I, they use that for tumbler. for yeah. in the tumbler, in the tumbler. To yeah. clean the brass yeah, yeah. That's a, so there's all kinds of products the neat part of that story is the first year they advertised buying walnuts they bought right around a hundred thousand pounds but they didn't even have equipment yet to figure out how to process them. So they had this learning pro Now it's high tech and now they go through a hundred thousand pounds of these nuts every day. Wow. Every day they're operating. 
and they've got an eye on there that if it picks up something that's a little bit darker as far as the meat a puff of air at least last time i was yeah. over there and it's been several years ago but it, the, all the nut meats are going across a, a conveyor system basically and if, it, if that eye picks up something that's darker or kind of a foreign material it sends a puff of air out and it blows that off of the the conveyor i mean this stuff's going by really fast it used to be they did it all by eyesight and just had to pick out you know the poor meats in there but they now they're they still are using eyesight some though they yeah. still got conveyor yeah, belts of women just sitting people. there picking and yeah. it's pretty neat it's I quite an go. operation you've been there i have i want to yeah. go yeah. Yeah. And i will go yeah. it's a pretty good operation but they bring the machines out they set them up for people um and there's six of them in the state right now and so uh oh you know, i'd like to have more of them because most fuel prices being the way they are right now it'd be nice to have these spread out about every you know 35 miles or checkerboard across the landscape um because you know i mean he's had people coming from wichita and kansas city but by the time you they just kind of enjoy doing it yeah. by the time you figure their fuel costs unless they're coming to visit family or something in the area anyway you know that's a you're probably breaking even in some cases or maybe even losing, losing money yeah um i felt bad for the guy yesterday that drove all the way from north kansas city i flipped him an extra 20 i'm going hey, <laughs> you've had a bad day i gave him 20 extra but uh, uh i am the farthest west uh nut receiving station in the united states there's nothing west of me at all so uh, just another little bit of trivia yeah mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> you.